In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I've just installed this pressure reduction valve onto the mains water feed supplying our downstairs toilet. And as I'm also going to be replacing the system fill valve, I'm going to explain a little bit about the filters that come with these valves because there's not a lot of information out there about them and certainly nothing in the instructions themselves. The new system has been a joy to operate compared with the old, with its half and full flush options and a much quieter, slicker fill system. And one of the unexpected benefits of this is it's totally eliminated the knocking pipe issue I had before where two people turned on the water at once, for example, one person flushing the toilet, another one running a tap. A plumber on James from Plumber Parts' excellent Instagram forum suggested to me at the time that it could be because of the cistern. Whilst I couldn't believe this could be the case, he was obviously right because I haven't had a single knocking pipe issue since upgrading this cistern. Although I don't quite understand how that's fixed the issue. However, unfortunately, the VBuff fill valve that I installed at the time failed within a matter of days. Which is surprising as I've got a similar fill valve on the upstairs toilet, which I installed about five years ago. So on James's recommendation, I installed this Viva Skylo bottom entry fill valve in its place. A lovely bit of kit with its brass thread, but unfortunately, this also failed within a matter of days. As you can see here with the water over the overflow pipe. Now, Viva were brilliant in replacing the valve without hesitation. However, I suspected that there was a bigger problem at play here, given that two valves from two separate manufacturers had now failed. And while I suspected I had a high water pressure, other than the knocking of the pipes and the occasional leaking tap valve that needed replacing, I haven't really had any problems. And of course, that VBuff fill valve upstairs has been absolutely fine. So anyway, I decided to buy a pressure reduction valve and I found this Honeywell on Screwfix. But unfortunately, contrary to what the website would lead me to believe, the valve that arrived was neither Honeywell, nor did it have a brass pressure gauge on it. With a bit of digging, I found out that Residio used to be part of the Honeywell brand and they're now selling standalone kit. But the combination of receiving a valve which I didn't expect to receive and also not having the brass pressure gauge on it did annoy me. And so I say to Screwfix, sort this out because by not updating your listings details, you're misleading us humble DIYers. So ideally, I'd install this pressure reduction valve on the mains feed where it comes into the house. But unfortunately, I can't do this because it's hidden behind a kitchen cupboard. And also, with everything in the house functioning absolutely fine, I was loath to reduce the entire pressure in the house. You can install this particular valve in the vertical or horizontal position. So I could have tried to fit it underneath the cistern itself, but there wasn't really enough room and the pressure gauge wouldn't have been pointing in the right direction. So I decided that installing it here on this runner pipe in the cellar below the system was by far the best option. Now doing these jobs is so beneficial because you inevitably end up fixing other things as well. And when I took the insulation off the pipe work, I found a leaking 90 degree elbow joint. Clumsy bit of soldering by the company that installed this and also the double pipe central heating system when I moved into the cottage back in 2010. And this joint's not great either. So it's probably been very slowly dripping for pretty much the whole time I've lived here. And as I was going to have to cut into this pipe work to install the pressure reduction valve, it was a perfect opportunity to replace this licking, licking, this leaking joint. Fortunately, there was an isolator valve I could turn off to switch off the flow of water in this pipe. And after levering open the pipe hinge clip, I cut the pipe open with my excellent new Barco pipe cutter to drain the residue of water from this pipe. I then cut the pipe on the other side of that leaking elbow joint to remove the entire section. So I did have these 90 degree elbows that I could have soldered in place, but decided it would completely eliminate any chance of leaking if I was to bend a new 90 degree section of pipe work, particularly given I really love bending copper pipe using my Irwin Hillmore pipe bender that I've used on quite a few projects to date. And whilst I'm sure there's a science to bending pipes and James at Plumber Parts has done at least one brilliant video on this, I tend to do them by eye and then double check the angle afterwards using my combination square fine tuning if necessary. I then marked and cut the new pipe work to fit the straight coupler compression joint, which I decided there was a better option than soldering given the proximity of the pipe work to the ceiling. Also, even if there's a tiny thimble full of water in the pipe work, this will be enough to prevent the solder flowing around the joint. So compression joints in this situation are just so much easier. I had another hinge clip in my plumbing box, so I screwed this in position to support the new pipe work. And then it was onto the section that would accommodate the pressure reduction valve which required a 60 millimeter gap in the pipe work, which again, I trimmed with the pipe cutter. 
As a matter of practice these days, I always deburr pipes before connecting them, as a pipe cutter naturally leaves a lip on the inside of the pipe, which can cause turbulence and potentially pinholing. I use a Stanley knife blade here, finishing off with a bit of 240 grit sandpaper. But there are also specialist tools you can buy. And then it was time to assemble the joints, starting with the straight coupler, and then the pressure reduction valve. There's a lot of debate as to whether you should put PTFE tape on compression joints. I don't see the point given it's the olive itself that creates a watersight seal. You see a lot of people putting PTFE tape on the thread itself. If you're going to use PTFE tape, I would say use it on the olive, but I decided rather than using that to actually use jointing compound instead around each olive and then tighten the nuts on each joint. The general rule of thumb is not to over tighten compression joints initially because you can always give them another half turn to eliminate any leaks once the water has been turned back on. Now I've read in some of the screw fix reviews that the pressure gauge being plastic leaks like a sieve if you don't put PTFE tape on. So I put a couple of turns around the gauge thread. It's such a shame this thread isn't brass before screwing the thread into the valve. So turning to the new Skylo bottom entry fill valve, I thought I'd share with you a little interesting fact that I learned during this job. The valve comes pre-installed with Viva's double check filter. There are two check valves, one each side of these O-rings, which is designed to prevent backflow, or to put it another way, to eliminate the risk of someone turning the water tap on and drawing water out of the system if, for example, the fill valve has failed and the critical level was submerged. The double check valve in the filter prevents water leaving the system through the valve itself. Now that blue filter you saw can also be fitted in its place in a couple of situations. Firstly, where there's no risk of backflow, where, for example, the cistern is drawing its water from a loft tank, which itself benefits from an AG air gap. And by that, I mean the overflow pipe on the loft tank is below where the water is fed into the tank itself. And secondly, where, for example, some speed fit connectors do clash with this double check valve and prevent the inflow of water into the system. So if you are going to use this blue filter and your system doesn't already benefit from an AG air gap, so it would be advisable to fit a double check valve somewhere else on the inlet pipe into the system to prevent any backflow issues. Now this backflow issue all stems from the fact that the clever design of this fill valve is such that the water comes in from below the overflow pipe whereas a traditional fill valve, the water will come in from above, which is much noisier. Now, I don't see any risk of backflow on my system, but I suppose there could be a situation where the water utility company might turn the mains off to do some works. So as a precaution, I decided to leave the double check filter in place. I also decided to reuse the rather nice brass nut that came on my VBAF fill valve. The Viva Skylo fill valve comes fitted with a plastic nut, and I suspect this is deliberate because they're very keen that you don't over tighten the thread, which of course you don't need to do because it's got that lovely big rubber washer on the internal part of the thread that sits in the system. And the final job was to install an isolator valve on the water feed pipe below the system. Now I've already got one a couple of rooms away, but it's just not convenient. And also there's very good reason for installing it so close to the system, which I'll come on to in a minute. With a new fill valve in position, I could switch the two isolating valves back on and start experimenting with the new pressure reducing valve. I settled on an operating pressure of around two to two and a half bar. And the reading that the dial gives out depends on whether it's mid flush or not. I'm afraid I can't tell you today what the actual water pressure is coming into the house. Because when I fully open this valve, the pressure goes completely off the scale. But the fact that so many valves have failed suggests it's well over the 16 bar operating limit of the Viva Skylo fill valve. So having fully opened the valve, I hastily closed it back down to the two to two and a half bar area that I want to operate in. And to do this, I marked a little marker pen mark on the dial itself so that I could count the number of revolutions back to the point I started at. I did also experiment right down at the lowest limit, 0.25 bar, and it did fill the system, but just too slow for my liking. I had one final job to do. After that pipe deburring, I thought it wise just to check that there was no debris in the fill valve. And this was the other reason I mentioned for having an isolator valve close to the cistern. With the water supply switched off at the valve, I could turn the arm on the fill valve anti-clockwise, lift the assembly away from the valve and turn the water supply back on with a glass over the valve to prevent any splashing. I also removed the diaphragm washer and gave that a rinse. I then reassembled the valve and switched the supply back on. And that's it, job done, but I'm going to leave you with one last interesting point that you might not have known about. 
This Viva Skylo fill valve is fitted with a delay mechanism, which means that when the system has completed its flush, there's a slight lag before the fill valve starts bringing water back into the system. This is a water saving measure. A lot of the fill valves, particularly those old ball valves, don't have this. So as soon as the system starts draining water into the pan, you see water coming back in. The net result is you're wasting unnecessary water in this process because half the water coming back in is also flushing down into the pan. So that's it for today. I'd like to give special thanks to Alan in the Viva Sanitary technical team for his help and advice on the phone over the last couple of days. I should hasten to add that I've bought all of the fill valves you've seen in today's video and Viva Sanitary haven't paid me anything to mention them. If you liked today's video, it'd be great if you give it a thumbs up below. As usual, all the information and tools I've referred to today will be in the description below the video, which don't forget you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And finally, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching. See you next week.